Hey, good morning, Michael. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Ben. Pleased to be here. Yeah, yeah. How are things over the pond today? Yeah, yeah. We're still in lockdown. So, yeah, very strange lockdown in comparison to the first one. But, yeah, we're all good. We're all good. We're all safe. We're all well. Good, good. That's what I want to hear. Well, I, I tell you, I, I appreciate your time and I want to be very conscientious of it. You know, one of the things that we've been talking about uh, as I just set a VMCE 2020 class is learning and how people learn. You know, so the whole idea behind, you know, what we're doing is, you know, how people learn and, and what are we going to do? Because there are certain tests we have to take as engineers. You know, there are certain kinds of information we have to ingest irregardless. You know, what what specifically first is your title and what's your role for Veeam before we go there, Michael? So, yeah, cheers, Van. So, yeah, Michael Cade and I'm a senior global technologist. Um, what, does that, what does that actually mean? So I sit within the product strategy group here at, here at Veeam, reporting up into our CTO. And a lot of our, so we have a few different hats to put on. So one, first and foremost, is around the IT community. I think we'll get into it a bit later into or how passionate us as a team are around the IT community in general mm -hmm. um, and how we came from that or are still very much a part of that. And that's mm -hmm. what made us who we are. Um, the second bit is around feedback and that's feedback from that community. Our Veeam Vanguards, for example, very honest, truthful bits of feedback coming through there. <laughs> but also customers, so, prospects, yeah. alliances like literally anyone that touches the technology of Veeam, we want to hear about, well, obviously we want to hear the good stuff, but sure. more importantly, we want to hear the bad stuff. We want to hear the stuff that we don't do or gotcha. the stuff that we're missing because that's the stuff that we have the ability to influence into the into the product if it if it obviously fits the the business and the, the technology driver there. So yeah, that's, so, and then a lot of content, so we try and think out of the box a lot of the art of the possible. We try and look as much as we get to look at like the future of what's coming from a Veeam point of view. And we kind of get that. We're very, very lucky to to have a not only a say in where and what what comes, but also we uh, we get to play with that. But also we look at well, what's in the product today and how could we potentially bend the product to do something else? So a lot yeah. of the Veeam technology allows us. Uh, you can do so much with our with our software, right? So that's the, uh, that's really our, our such place. a cool such a cool role for all those things. And you know, I I have had the pleasure to meet many of the Veeam vanguards, and you're 100 correct. They mince no words, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, you know. So I mean, you're gonna, you know, you either have a target or you have a circle of love, one of the two. But uh, well, that's a really, really cool. Thank you for uh, for sharing that. As we think about that, I, you know, I've not seen a company that is um, so responsive to the forums as Veeam is. You know, in, in the fact that you know Anton spends a ton of time out there, but everyone from a technology side at Veeam spends a lot of time out there. When our customers say, "Oh, by the way, this is kind of a crazy thing. Can you help with that?" All of a sudden, all these developers jump in and go, "Yep, hold on, try this, do this." Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. That so the R and D forums now. I think it's been renamed, yeah. but it's been yeah. our community forum for the last like forever, thirteen years. And then this new forum, which is more community marketing focused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, exactly. Like you look at some of the the guys on there: Gostev, um, Vladimir Eremin, um, like literally the whole Anton's team is there, and they mm -hmm. have they have they. they keep a hawk's eye on that and, and help out. And we try and we try and obviously dip in there as well and help. And I know there's tons of SEs and SAs in there as yeah. well. But yeah, there's not many company vendors out there that have that following or that ability to really have that conversation with the top dogs on uh, like who's developing the actual right. product. Like that, that's, and it's not going away. That's something that, that will yeah. stay as we continue to grow not only market share but also like um as a company from a, right. like how many feet how many feet we have on the street from a veeam employee point of view it's not going to change that that mentality will still be the same yeah i i i love it personally i truly do Let, let's think now too 
as we move and, and understand now your role, man, you've got to be just having to drink information like from a fire hose every day. How do you learn, Michael? What What is your way of ingesting and learning? Yeah, so, so yeah, exactly that. There's all these new technologies flying around and data is obviously the, the the blood that goes through all of, a lot of these technologies and we want to be ahead of the game we we need to understand what's the next big thing and and how we're going to protect that do we need to protect it so but as a yeah so whether it's the public cloud or whether it's kubernetes or cloud native or so just all of these new technologies iot edge etc i'm i'm a i'm a i think i'm a practical learner in that i want to either have hands on to, to actually play with it if that's physically possible in a lab or in a in a sandbox environment but also around like video training I'm not the guy that wants to sit in a classroom and listen I'm not going to be the guy that reads a 300 page book that's not not me at all um although that was the me because if you think if we think back 10 15 years like yeah. the VCP and the other storage sets that I did well there was no other there was no real YouTube or there was no real Pluralsight or Udemy or the ability to access that that content and just really dive into this syllabus or this syllabus you kind of had to go when we were allowed out to these other places we um sure. you'd have to sit in a classroom you'd have to sit there for five days even when I first did my v VMCE back at version six seven that show wow. Maybe wow. how long I've been playing with me. <laughs> Four or um, three, you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely was playing with it well before I had to do certs because that's another big thing for me is that I don't really have too much time, but also I struggle with exams just because of the pressure, the anxiety that that brings. And I also don't – like they're, exams are important. I absolutely sat and went through them to begin my career, the VCS, VC, sorry, mm -hmm. the VFCE, the VCP. Mm -hmm. They're important to have that tick and that that badge of honor, right, that goes mm -hmm. on your LinkedIn that you can say, oh, right, I, I did this and this proves that I know my stuff. Mm -hmm. But as you say, Van, you, you mentioned around like, yeah, every day, you could pretty much pick up a new technology every day and start like, open the fire hose, let's, let's go. Um, yeah. I don't have well I probably do that's maybe I should take these certs as well that go alongside because one thing I've been working on for probably the last 12 to 18 months is around public cloud right and get foundational knowledge over the big three the Azure's the AWS's and really focusing on Pluralsight or YouTube videos mm -hmm. and and in particular like I'm following the tracks that most people would would follow for certi certification, right? Because I just want that foundational knowledge so that I can speak to our customers, I can speak to our product management and R&D, and I know what's going on, I know what to talk about. Right. So yeah, that's a that's kind of a, in a nutshell, how I how I approach it. Good, well, I mean, one of the things too, out of, out of that, that snippet, I want our, our listeners and viewers to understand that after all the other folks that you're going to see on this video along with michael and a couple more that we're going to do this afternoon the common theme is none of us like to take tests we get anxiety to no end you know and and i'll tell you michael you and and some of the others i consider some of the most intelligent people that i've had the pleasure to work with and know not because you're here but because that's how i feel and i'm getting the, oh yeah i hate taking that stuff i'm terrified i'm like going Oh my God, I am not the only one, you know, so it, it makes me feel a lot better. Um, you know, the other side of that coin, too, is that as things continue to change, because my first certification when I was at IBM years ago, we, you know, involved OS2, you know, as OS 1.3, when there were IBM Red Books that literally were like this, and that was how you figured it out. You know, there was no lab, there was no video. You know, if you got anything yeah. that was, you know, to watch, it's because some guy went in a room and filmed it with a handy cam, you know, and then you watch it on a VHS tape somewhere, right? <laughs> so it's it's yeah, exactly. well, well changed going forward. So, okay, so now that's good. I'm, I'm thinking now that here is this environment that you work into. 
things that you're you're structured around, how you're ingesting, what you're following, which makes total sense. Now, once we have your your day laid out for you and what's going on, how much time do you spend if you're going to say, and, and I want to do something completely hypothetical. Tonight, you're going to do some kind of a, a 30 or 45 minute talk on a new technology, something that you need to prep for today. How much time are you going to spend to kind of gather that information, not from not from what you already know, but I mean, putting something together that you're going to do later today? Yeah, so so this has been a constant battle as well throughout this whole pandemic. I think you find yourself in well highs and lows in terms of being motivated to do yeah. anything. Um, one of the biggest challenges that I set myself at the beginning was spending an hour a day just learning something. It doesn't have to be tech. Okay. Like I, I spend a lot of time, like you say, speaking in front of people on breakout sessions, customers. And this whole this whole approach of speaking into a camera is well quite alien to a lot of people. Sure. Yeah. As well as it is when you jump on a main stage and there's four four thousand people in front of you. <laughs> but having yeah. that like there's so many more there's that that sort of technique as well. So it's better in that, but it's constantly evolving and learning. So an hour a day, not at the weekend, and if you don't do it, it's fine. It's yeah. not holding you like don't hold yourself too accountable for it. Just know that there's an hour in there that you should or that I've I've set aside an hour because I, I could the the funny thing about being at Beam is that I know exactly the night before what my day should look like. Oh, yeah. oh, at yeah. nine o'clock in the morning when I sit in front of my machine, that day is starting to unravel and change and things are always like nothing's ever final at Beam. I have no that idea what you're talking about. <laughs> So, so you can put, set aside an hour, but if you start to then miss that hour, then you're going to start like that's going to be a downward spiral. You're going to hold yourself accountable. It's going to be a depressing type type um, approach. So you have to be quite open about that. And some days you'll have two, some days you'll have three. And some afternoons I go, all right, I'm going to disappear. I'm going to go and sit over there in front of the TV and I'm going to put on plural site on the TV right. away from my email. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's pretty much. If if you were to give me a topic, let's say something like IoT, where I'm pretty much a, a complete novice, pre-novice, mm -hmm. if you like, if I had a 40-minute session to go and deliver, like I would probably know the foundations of mm -hmm. how it looks from a like like what we need to do, what the edge looks like, what IoT looks like in a couple mm -hmm. of hours. Confidently to be able to put a slide deck together or a demo together, you're probably looking at maybe a couple of days. Gotcha. You want me to like actually have a solid conversation, not maybe above like a 102 type session, right. and maybe a couple of weeks. So that's kind of the scale. But we do kind of have to think on our feet in our position because we're potentially going into customers and having a conversation. And one of the things I've always thought is that. In fact, when I first started as a consultant, I was given, I was always set, I was always asked like the day before, two days before, you need to go to customer A and you need to do this. Maybe an antivirus install, maybe a NetApp installation, because that's my background. Yeah. Maybe this, maybe that, right? And I had no idea. <laughs> but we're billing this customer out for like whatever the money is, I'm not getting it in my back pocket, that's for sure, right? That's um, right, yeah. But I'm, being, I'm on the hook and well, that pressure, turn that pressure into not anxiety and not not um, not a bad, not a negative. Well, let's mm -hmm. go and learn, let's go and find out. And the only thing you really need to do oh, is this one, mm -hmm. deliver, deliver the statement of works that you've, you've provided, but also, if you're just one page ahead of who you're speaking to, and it's okay not to be as well, like if you go into the customer and you pretend that you know more than them, you are going to fail. Mm -hmm. But if you actually do go and spend that time research for 30 minutes, sometimes I would just look at something for 30 minutes and be able to go and do a billable day's worth of PS off the back of that and understand more because then you're starting to build out your Right. your capabilities it's all a benefit to you and i think that's important to think about how you learn and that comfort zone 
whether it's anxiety for exams some yeah. people have gone crazy into taking six seven eight exams on aws and no people on twitter doing that oh god that's fine if that's their game like mm -hmm. fair play and it looks really impressive all them badges and they'll work and that'll get you get that will get you places mm -hmm. but having the same that same foundational and push your boundaries of being able to learn it i think that's a that's that's where i sit anyway i'm not discounting certifications at all oh no 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 not yeah. My thing. yeah no no i mean that, that's that's good insight you know i i think that it's like everything else um you know i i absolutely become terrified you know the night before an exam you know it's one of those kind of things i literally i don't sleep i you know i get cramps yeah. i mean you know i've got a headache i mean it's a whole bit and it doesn't matter if it's something that like maybe you and i the day before quiz and you know you gave me 30 questions and i spot on every single question know it inside and out can draw it out whiteboard it show it to you in the lab i don't care as soon as i know i've got to go in that door and they're going to lock it inside where i'm taking this secured environment test all bets are off you know they are so well as i think about you know again you grabbing information learning and thank you so much for sharing about how you're developing those presentations in the time and and in doing that my my question was leading to the fact that folks are watching the different people that are here is that it takes time you can't just magically walk into a test or to any environment and not understand what you're going to do you have to put in the time to read the material understand whether you're a learner from videos whether you're a learner from reading documentation and highlighters or or just you have to have a lab to hands-on you have to find the key of how you learn and go forward go yeah so i think i think one of the big things so i started my exam days with the microsoft mcitp which is the mcse on 2008 van that was my first it wasn't my first operating system but let's say 2008 Jerry. yeah <laughs> so, but, and that that what you could pretty much pick up those big chunky microsoft books oh, you yeah. read them fall asleep halfway through wake up go again yeah maybe you didn't necessarily need that hands-on approach or you it was very easy to have that now i would say that and this is maybe showing my my not so much doing the search, search yeah. but the ones that i have done the beam one for example if you haven't touched the product you are not going to pass that exam that's right that yeah. practicality yeah. of being able to go here go there knowing where to go yeah. is so much more than just being a bookworm and understanding the concept of of what it is that it's trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that that hands-on approach is really that key key to any exam now, whether it's these new cloud-based, which they all give you free vouchers to jump in and yeah. play around with them. And if you're lucky to have a credit card that we can use and, and <laughs> And uh, right. from a work point of view, and be able to invest that time to learn, so that you sure. can have those deeper conversations. But yeah, there's there's a playground somewhere. Some and there's so many free resources out there as well on the on the web for that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Now speaking of resources, that's something I don't want to miss. Lean back a little bit. What's on your shirt there? Ah, yeah. Visa. Now I yeah. know, you know, as I look around, when there's something cool I'm looking for, you know, I'm always looking for your site what's out there that's new i'm looking for melissa's stuff if there's anything vSphere oriented i'm looking at melissa's vmiss site tell me a little bit about what that is and and again michael what your concept was with why you brought vzilla out yeah so probably 10 ish years ago let's say 10 years ago i was that's this it community i kind of found it on twitter and it was like wow this is this is where this is where I need to be. This is where I need to be active within this community. And then found that I was reading blogs from all over the place. And coming from a storage background, virtualization was obviously big. Mm -hmm. Melissa's blog from a NetApp point of view, but also VMware was was huge in that learning curve. Then you got the likes of Frank Deneman and Duncan Eppin and those mm -hmm. guys, William Lamb as well, from a VMware point of view. But like, yeah, there's hundreds of blogs, right? Yeah. So there's there's a couple of different look, the, the reason for Vzilla and Vzilla 
started off just being vzilla.co.uk and it was a very bland WordPress, WordPress themed site. Then over the years, you start doing stupid things, well, yeah. creative things like I logos and awesome, stuff. Man. Yeah. And stickers yeah. and all sorts. Like, I think like decals yeah. above your wall like that, right? Yeah. You start doing stupid, <laughs> crazy things. But the real premise of, of vzilla, vzilla.co.uk was about, well, I take I take tons of notes, especially when you're learning something a day or two days before you're meant sure, to go on yeah. site. Let's take all the notes we can. Let's okay, that's gonna really help me because I'm consuming that. But there'll be someone else out there, and maybe I had to go through the or over the hurdles to find these resources. So first of all, the blogs were okay, these are this is a common challenge that I've had. I'm gonna blog about that. And it's really a note for me. But I always think about blogging as but if there's one, if there's if it, one person, if one person finds that useful besides me, then that was it was worth paying the five ninety nine a month to post that up. I don't make any money off the blog. Couldn't agree more. Yep. Um, it, it is purely there. I put what I want on there. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I put what I like. There's no opinion. Or if there are opinion pieces. It's all my opinion. I'm not dictated to on who. Um, and yeah, it's really just progressed that way. And then more recently, because of the lockdown, I started to branch out into more more video content because, well, that's the way I like to learn. Yes. So let's throw some demos out there around. But, and then I found that these long 10, 20 minute demos were getting good hits. But then also these three, five minute demos, these two minute Tuesday type demos. Which is a great just thought, touching yeah. a lot of beam technology that that that's really and they're so simple to just throw out and it's yeah. that hands-on approach again that, mm -hmm. that i like to do it's yeah it's about yeah. helping other people out right that's the that's the key to visa there is help mm. the community or <clears throat> be part of the community by well don't just take you've got there's got to be some there's got to be some sharing and and sharing and caring in there as well right yeah, I think the common theme, and, and when you get a chance to see all the other folks that have been on here with us, Michael, you know, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. You know, it's not about, oh, hey, I did this, pat me on the back, this is what's going on. It's about, look, I already spent 80 hours figuring this out. If I yeah. can give you this in three minutes, do you want to spend 80 hours or do you want three minutes? I want three minutes. You know, so I, I I totally understand, and I think that's awesome. Um, you know, the site has tremendous content, and I know, you know, here in the United States, um, you know, we're now in the middle of some ridiculous new surge of the virus. It's just insane, and our restaurants are closing again and all that. And I looked at my wife yesterday, and I'm like, please tell me we're not going to do this for eight more months. You know, uh, who knows? But yeah, yeah. My brain has already gone into what kind of stuff are my customers now talking to me about? You know, what do they want to see? They want to see V1 and how it interacts. They want to see how a sober offloads. They want to understand what happens when that object storage fails and how to fix that. You know, all those pieces that are there. And and to again, to my side, we do those kinds of hands-on things. You're not the canned, I've got a press shirt and it's sexy behind me. No, man, let's jump in the interface and I'll show you how to do it real quick. And if you have a question, email me. Let me help you. Yeah, so. 100%. Like, so some of my videos, Van, even the, the last one that I just said, uh, uh, that I just posted was around uh, Veeam and the network traffic rules and being yeah. able to automate that. At the end, like, I run the run the script and it works. It all works. Well, it adds, adds some of them, but there's some errors in there because it's adding the same ones. Right. And I'm like, Look, this is real life. Like I'm literally hitting record, and we are playing this button. Like, right. obviously, there's a point where I could not post that, but that's not real life. Things do go wrong. Things don't mm -hmm. work the way, and I want to make sure that they're right. Don't get me wrong. I have to do can demos that are oh, on sure. point and they're yeah. very concise and they work. And there's no red buttons. We don't have any fails in there. But that's marketing. Mm -hmm. Let's say that's marketing. Real life is well. Some things do fail. Some things do have warnings. And I think that's the, the real life thing is that that's really the, the focus is is things go things go wrong. Things go bad. And 
it's how we how we how easy it is to get out of that and how easy it is to help like yeah. it's pretty intuitive this is talking veeam here but yeah all of our tech is pretty simple stuff like it doesn't take a rocket scientist to 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 do anything in there yeah Point, uh, points well noted. I mean, you know, I, I can't tell you, and I know you do it because, you know, you guys are up to your eyes 24-7, but, you know, every time you sit down and there's a script or you're running Packer for the first time and you're trying to get something to automatically run and you just go, gosh, that looks wonderful. And then you go to make it happen and it goes, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that three hours of nothing. What's wrong? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, listen, uh, Michael, I, I want to be very conscious of your time. I, I really appreciate you sharing your thoughts and how you ingest and what you share and about Vizilla and, and you know, your role and things that are being. Do you, do you have anything that you would want to share with folks to take away as they are trying to get past their anxiety, trying to get ready to prep for something and, and move into maybe a technology that they are not comfortable with? And how to approach that before we let you go so first of all you don't need to spend any money but i think that's my first and foremost like if you go let's take kubernetes for an example kubernetes sounds very daunting and, it, mm -hmm. and to be fair it's the new technology right um if you're going to build it from the ground up it it's complicated it mm -hmm. still fails for me daily um mm -hmm. but go to youtube Type in Kubernetes. There's some there's some amazing amazing content out there that you can sit there for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, two hours. Like there is some really cool free content that will get you get you going. Listening to podcasts, get some perspective from different people that are using that technology as well. Again, free. Um, and don't worry about that exam. Don't like first and foremost. Like if you're putting off learning a new technology, which is daunting in itself. Don't worry about the exam. Don't do the exam. Just learn. You learn the foundations. You learn the architecture. You learn the advanced bits. And you can have that conversation or at least put that into practicality. Use it. And then you'll become like, and then, then look at the exam if you really have to do it for your work. But I think if we all sit still, especially in this industry, we constantly change, whether it's from your IBM days, man. Like, look at the. <laughs> you can look at the sections, right? Whether yeah. it's store, like sto mainframes, storage, virtualization, cloud-based computing, yeah. cloud-native with Kubernetes and more DevOps-focused. They're they they key points in this timeline, and someone, a lot of us, had to make those changes to understand what that new technology looked like. You adapt, you evolve. And I think that's the, the biggest takeaway I'll give is that jump on the boat, get into it early, because not that what you're doing today is going to go away, because it won't, because there's always yeah. a long tail. Mm -hmm. But if you can be at the front, be at the front of the boat, be at the front of the bus, or just on the boat, you're already there. You're already starting to learn whatever that technology. And another thing is if you're not interested in Kubernetes, or you're not interested in the subject matter that everyone's chatting about, don't do it. That's another bit of advice. You have to do something that you're passionate about that you want to learn because you might find that that's the biggest niche and it might be the biggest thing. I like One of the big things I keep on mentioning in IoT and Edge, that's been the topic this week. Everyone that I've spoken to has spoke to me about data management at the edge and how do we do that and how does it look, whether it's virtualization, whether it's Kubernetes. But the IoT brings its own challenges around different technologies and everything in there. And that might be the niche to go and grab hold of, go and learn yeah. what IoT actually means. What what are these devices, these these Raspberry Pis that we're putting out on the edge? I've done a load with them as well. Um, I love those things, man. <laughs> yeah, they're amazing. They're amazing. Um, but go and learn. There's lots of... Um, there's, you, you'll find if you go down that route, you're going to find a whole heap of words and acronyms that you've never heard of. Whether you've come from a storage point of view and infrastructure point of view, like yeah, there, there's things in there that that open your eyes to. Well, there's a big world out here, and um, yeah, you just got just have fun with it. Yes, granted, we all have to pay our bills and we have to pay our mortgages. Sure. Yeah. But enjoy it, and 
if you enjoy it, I guarantee you'll enjoy learning and you will learn better. More efficient is probably the better way. Good advice, Michael, thank you so much. Well, listen, at the end, uh, I'm gonna put up some links to your site. Uh, I'm gonna put up some links to the little two minute Tuesday things that you do, which I think are, are really, really cool. I really enjoy those. Um, you know, but thanks so much for sharing a little bit about your day and your world and your brain and, and all those kinds of things. So, enjoy your weekend. Talk to you really soon. Cheers, Bob. Thanks for having me. Uh,